Okay, in the last video, you guys said that you wanted to be able to update your asset bundles in your app without actually having to update your app on the App Store. So today we're gonna do that with a grid layout group. Let me explain. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it. So currently we have a Unity app that calls to a server that has a folder of asset bundles and then we return those asset bundles to Unity. But right now our asset bundle buttons, I guess, are hard-coded into Unity. We have Cube, Sphere, and Capsule. So what would be ideal is if we could um, just add stuff to this asset bundle folder in the server and then uh, our app in Unity would create those buttons for us so we could effectively update the content in our app without actually having to um, update our app on the App Store. So the way that we could do that is this. So we have our Unity app called to a PHP script on the server that returns us a list of all the asset bundles in that folder and then we could create buttons for those asset bundles in the Unity app, okay? And then once those buttons are pressed, of course, the app would work just how we have it. We would build the URL for that asset bundle request, and then the server would return that asset bundle to Unity. So yeah, let's get to work. Okay, I'll put a link to this GitHub project down in the description below, but let's just go through it right now so that you guys know what's going on. Okay, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, this is just a, a basic AR foundation project that allows you to place objects on the ground. The, what you'll notice that's different about this project is it has this uh, scroll menu here. So like we were saying before, we're going to call to our API and it's going to return us a list of all the items in our asset bundles folder. Um, we're going to instantiate buttons uh, into the scroll menu here. So in the prefabs folder, you'll see that there is a button prefab. If we drag this into here, that's a button. And you'll notice that we can drag uh, unlimited buttons into here and this menu is going to expand accordingly. So we could just keep duplicating these, um, duplicate it again, and you'll see that all these buttons here um, hide behind a mask. So if we were to uh, click this content parent, we should be able to move it up and you'll see that the buttons um, move accordingly. So this will scroll uh, when you get the menu filled up. So let's zero this out and uh, delete all these. Now, I remember I had an internship. My first internship was in Unity. I had no business getting hired and I should have got fired like 10 times over. But they had me do some project where I had to create like dynamic menus and stuff. And I had absolutely no way and no idea how to do it. I actually didn't even think it was possible. So hopefully this will help you guys out in some way. Um, but anyway, uh, now we need to, let's just create some asset bundles. Um, and put them on our server. This is kind of a review from the last video, but it should be quick. So right now we have a cube under our content parent. Let's actually turn off our menu so we can see here. So we're gonna make this an asset bundle, but let's also make some other bundles as well. So we have a cube, actually let's right click and create a 3D object sphere. Let's right click 3D object uh, capsule and then another 3D object and cylinder. So we should have four items there, cool. Now let's, um, cube, let's copy this position and let's paste this onto all the other ones. We still might have to do some adjustments here. Okay, so that looks good. The cylinder is too low. Let's bring the cylinder up. This is just so that these objects all sit on the ground. Uh, the sphere looks good. The capsule is also gonna have to come up and now all these should sit flat on the ground. Um, so in our materials, uh, I think let's make our cube black, let's make the sphere blue, let's make the capsule green, and let's make the cylinder pink. And now we have to make all these prefabs and then we're going to turn them into asset bundles. So click all these and drag them into, can we not do that? No. All right, let's drag them in one by one, cube, sphere, capsule, cylinder. Okay, so we have all of our objects, we can delete them in the scene. And now we need to uh, name them. So let's remove all the unused names and let's make a new name here. This is gonna be, oh man, what the hell? So new, this is gonna be capsule. This is going to be cube. This is going to be cylinder. And this is going to be sphere. Okay, cool, so all these are named. Beautiful. Now, if you didn't watch the last video, um, you'll notice in our editor folder, we have a script called create asset bundles. So we're gonna go assets, build asset bundles. Okay, so when that finishes, you'll see that we have a folder called asset bundles and that has all of our bundles for each platform inside here. So let's reveal this in Finder and let's just put it on our desktop for now. 
If we double click this, the only thing I think we should do is just get rid of the meta files. So meta, 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 cool. All right, and then we should be left with all we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh. Okay, one more meta file, delete that, cool. Now I'm going to open up my uh, the root directory for my website here, and I have an asset bundles folder that's already got stuff in it. Let's blow all this stuff out of there, and then let's just put these all in there. Okay, cool. So we have all that. And delete this empty folder, and then let's open up my website directory here in Sublime, and then my asset folder. I'm using SFTP plugin to upload this whole folder, but you could use FileZilla or whatever you want. This is just getting all these asset bundles up on my server into a folder called asset bundles that has each one for you know each platform now the other thing that i've included in this project um, whenever you download this uh, github project if you open up the folder uh, in this root directory here is the item list.php script this is what we also need to uh, upload to our server and this is the php script that is going to return us uh, the list of all the assets in our asset bundles folder. So you'll see here, um, folder here is just asset bundle slash. We're going to create a mask that is going to look for only files in here that say Android because we have, you'll see duplicates of each asset bundle. So we're only concerned with the ones that say Android. You could change that to iOS, doesn't really matter. But then we're going to loop through uh, each one of these files that it finds. We're going to split the file name uh, with this dash here. And then we're going to echo the first index of that array uh, followed by a comma. So we're going to have a comma separated list of all of the assets in our asset bundles folder. And that's what it's going to return to us in Unity. So uh, on our canvas, we have a menu script. So if we open that up in uh, mod or Visual Studio, you will notice that the first thing that it does is turns the menu off. So this menu button here, um, calls activate menu true. So when you click the menu button, it's going to activate the menu, which turns off the menu button and turns on the scroll menu, which is this object here. So then um, what you'll notice here is when the menu is active, we're going to load the menu items. Load menu items calls destroy all buttons. So if we have already any buttons uh, that's in our grid layout group, it's going to destroy all those. And then it's going to call to our API to get this new item list. So if we go here, what happens is we, we're passing in a callback that's going to give us this uh, list of strings, which is our actual item list. Um, but you're seeing that we make a web request here to this item list, which is your website slash item list.php. And then that's going to return us that comma separated list of items in our asset bundles folder. So once we get that text, we can just split it by the comma and then we can remove any empty values and then we can call our callback with this uh, unique list of items in our asset bundle folder. So back in this menu.cs script, you'll see that on items loaded, um, we just loop through all these string items in this list and instantiate a button accordingly. Uh, we call the init function on each button, which I think is just setting the uh, button text, the text that's in the middle of the button that just says what the item is and then I change the game object name to that same name as well. And the last thing that we need to do is actually set an action for when that button is clicked. So we can add a listener to this button, which is um, turning off the menu by default. And then uh, it's calling content controller content, which if we go here, this is from the last video, this destroys, uh, destroys all the current children in the content parent, which is what's getting placed in AR. And then uh, it calls the get bundle object uh, function from our API script, which is just basically using that asset name and um, instantiating uh, the asset bundle accordingly. Okay, so if we click play, we can see this in action here. So whenever you open up the menu, it's going to make a call to your server that uh, get item PHP script, and it's going to return a list of all the buttons and they are all going to get loaded into our scroll menu here. And this is all of our buttons. So what this means is now you could put this app up on the app store and then you could just infinitely add um, items to your asset bundle folder and then they will all show up whenever somebody clicks on the menu item 
or sorry, the menu button in your app. So then you'll see here when we click capsule, uh, the capsule shows up in the content parent here. Click the menu again, we can click cube, and now a cube shows up. That's our black cube and so on. Okay, so yeah, let's build this out and test it on the device. Okay, so our app is open here. Let's just scan it around until we can detect the ground plane. Okay, cool. We got one, so let's click. That'll drop our cube. So if we open up the menu, all of our buttons loaded, let's hit this toggle and turn off the uh, ground planes. And then if we hit capsule, that should load our capsule. Looks good. Let's go cylinder. There's our cylinder. Okay, test sphere. Very good. Everything looks like it's working perfectly. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.